Hey, good morning, y'all. This is Carolina Weather Authority meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg. We had a nice cold front come through last night, and things feel a lot better out there. I'll tell you what, going to be a nice morning for a walk here and some work outdoors, it looks like. Uh, got a couple inches of rain last night at the house. The mud was getting dehydrated, so it was nice to see that. A little sarcasm there, of course. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's talk tropics here because I've gotten your attention now, and we have seen some developments in uh, what the forecast trends are, and those are very important because... Uh, things are starting to look, I'm not going to say certain, they're never certain this far out, but we're starting to have a little bit better grasp on what may be coming out of the Caribbean here over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so for more videos, which will be coming more frequently, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest. All right, so here's what we're looking at right now. I talked about two storms potentially threatening the United States. That was never, of course, a slam dunk, just what some of the more consistent models were showing. Now, we still see the threat for two storms, but what it's looking like um, is that the first storm may, in fact, stay far enough south to not necessarily be a problem for us in the U.S., which is some better news. It didn't necessarily look like that a few days ago, and uh, some models were uh, giving Florida a very quick uh, developing storm to their south coming up. And that's why I said something, because I, I would rather you be prepared and it not happen than maybe the alternative. But the reason that looks like it's not going to happen is that we have high pressure here to the east of Florida, which is actually going to uh, kind of put our front on hold over South Florida and keep whatever comes out of the Caribbean this weekend farther to the south. That's some good news. Now, having said that, now that this first system may be out of the way, a second system coming behind it could be a bigger problem for us. The reason why is that this high will eventually get shifted to the east. A new high comes down, a new trough picks it up, and... Um, the stronger a storm is, um, the more likely it is going to try to get pulled northward by um, winds that are far higher up in the sky in the jet stream. So, um, again, I'm not calling for anybody to just uh, cancel plans just yet, just making you aware that we may potentially have some problems coming down the road. The good news is that the first system looks a lot less likely to be the troublemaker. The second one, though, um, seeing more evidence that that could be more of a problem, and I guess that could certainly change more. I know I've gotten your attention. Don't ever want to sound the alarm too soon. Uh, but I think uh, with the pattern that we're looking at, um, definitely uh, breeding ground for storms in the Western Caribbean we need to be watchful for. It's happened many times in October. It could happen again this time. And I could, of course, be wrong and it could not happen. But from what I'm seeing now, we've got stuff to at least watch. All right, so a look at what's going on from the Hurricane Center. We've got a tropical wave southeast of Jamaica likely to develop into a depression, we think, by Saturday. A 60% chance to me is likely. I think this will be in the red by later today or tomorrow. Um, the track of it is west-northwest, and that is putting the Yucatan on alert, maybe even western Cuba, um, something we're going to be watching. There's another system behind it. I'm going to show you that on the satellite image. Uh, which is uh, about 500 miles east of the Caribbean islands. It's moving far enough to the south that this first system's kind of going to be the, uh, it's going to clear the minefield for the second one, if that makes sense. And oh, by the way, there is another wave coming off of Africa, but a little too soon to speculate what's going to happen with that just yet. Here's a circulation here. That's the remains of Paulette still out there. Not going to develop, though, at this point. And then our strong front that came through the Carolinas and the northeast yesterday night, uh, is still up in New England and uh, should be moving gradually northeast into Canada, uh, but it's going to be sitting over South Florida here over the next several days. Those of you on the Gulf Coast, though, that have had the two storms in the last month are getting a nice breather from the humidity, and that's, of course, good news. There's still power outages in parts of southwest Louisiana right now, and uh, anything to cool it off, we shall take. Uh, gumbo season is what I call it. All right. So you can see our area here on the satellite, not very well organized, but starting to get into a spot where it could organize. The reason why is that um, moisture content, ocean heat content, and wind shear all become more favorable as this system moves off to the west-northwest into the northwest Caribbean. The big problem with this system is it's going to get blocked by this large high here that's actually going to push west and keep this front stalled over the southern Gulf of Mexico. Uh, it's not going to have a way anymore. It looks like it could sneak northeastward. And I'm going to show you what we're talking about. So we've got this huge trough cutting off over eastern Canada, over near the Hudson Bay. And uh, what's going on is this high pressure region here over the western Atlantic is starting to show up to be a little bit stronger than it was a couple of days ago. Uh, high pressures tend to block systems from coming northward. So this trough, as it is going to dig down into the southeast here tomorrow uh, and into the start of the weekend, does not 
at this point look like it's going to be strong enough to coerce our next system northward anymore. It did look that way potentially a few days ago, which would have meant that the Florida Keys were going to be hit potentially by a tropical system Sunday night, Monday morning. Now it's looking a lot less likely. So that's good news. Uh, however, this trough isn't going to hang out forever. Um, the high pressure system is going to rebuild and our next potential system as this high weakens has a chance at starting to creep back up to the north. Tough to say if it's going to make any kind of a turn at this point, uh, but what we see is this ridge building over the middle part of the country. It's going to warm things back up here, so it won't stay cool forever. What's going to happen with that is eventually it's going to progress east and a new trough is going to drop down and break this high pressure uh, ridge up. So what that will allow for uh, some weakness in the ridge to allow something potentially to come up to the north, and I think it could be over the central or eastern uh, parts of the Gulf of Mexico. You can see on the GEFS, that's the Ensemble Forecast System, the mean or the average height uh, does lower. There's a weakness here in the central to eastern Gulf, and that's something I'm concerned about. Uh, this will, of course, change probably. It's still 10 days away, but um, what we see is a lot different than what we're seeing this weekend, and that is a stronger high building over Florida. That, that high is going to fall apart, heights will drop, and we'll have more of an opening for something that maybe come up towards Florida, potentially farther west towards Louisiana as well. Uh, so here is a look at the parallel GFS. This is the model that was so consistent in bringing the first system up into Florida. Now it is uh, developing it toward tropical storm intensity, but keeping it northwest over the Yucatan, which is a lot better news for Florida. Notice how it tries to scoot it back to the right, but it just can't make enough progress. Um, this high uh, pressure system in here is going to block it, and so that that uh, the motion that's going to take it to the northeast would have had to have happened here over western Cuba. That's not going to happen now. Uh, the second system, though, uh, is actually going to track up toward Cuba and may have a better shot now that there's moisture in place behind the first system and an upper-level anticyclone, which is a high-pressure system, to allow it to strengthen. And the stronger it gets, the more likely it's coming up towards Florida. The weaker it is, and I'll show you some solutions to show that, the more likely it's going to dawdle around here, and then we've got to scratch our heads a few more days and see what happens. Uh, the GEFS shows this first system forming here and uh, tracking across the Yucatan, which should weaken it. There's still some model guidance that try to bring it up toward the central Gulf Coast, but the majority now keep it trapped in the western Gulf, where it could become a hurricane if shear stays low enough. The other issue is we've got a lot of dry air back here, so it may be struggling because of that. Um, and then eventually we've got our second system forming down in here um, by the 6th or 7th, it looks like, near Jamaica or south of Cuba. And that may have more of a shortcut to come up into the southeast or the central Gulf. This looks very uncertain because there's two systems that I think will be succinct and different from each other. Uh, but certainly um, the second system, because that high weakens over Florida, has a better chance at least coming up into the Gulf. So be alert at this point. Don't necessarily cancel your plans just yet. Here's the Canadian model, by the way. Keeps the first system weak. You don't even really see much of anything but lower pressure. <clears throat> Early next week, has got a second system. And as we uh, get out to uh, about a week from tomorrow, uh, you can see the dropping pressure and developing system here on the Canadian model and uh, something likely to come up the Yucatan Channel and uh, into the southern Gulf. At this point, there's a new trough coming down, so a direct strike on Texas. I'm not going to say it won't happen, but looking unlikely, what we would have is a slow-moving storm here that eventually can get kicked off to the northeast. If it takes a shortcut, comes farther right, it's more of a problem for South Florida. If it goes farther west, more of an issue for the central Gulf and perhaps the Panhandle. So that's what we're looking at. The other thing I talked about yesterday is the heavy rain. No matter where these systems go with a stalled front, um, Florida is going to get dumped on perhaps one or two feet of rain potentially over the next 15 days. Um, and here's a look at the European, which shows the first system a lot less likely to come towards Florida, but a second system down in here uh, with potentially more of a threat, as you can see, up here into the central Gulf, where it is still plenty warm for a system. European Ensemble shows the first system unlikely to come towards Florida now, uh, but a new system could follow it into the central Gulf. And uh, we'll have to see if it's Louisiana or Texas, or if it's sitting out here or eventually turning right toward Florida. Again, too soon to say that, but my map shows you that that threat is there. Last, we'll look at the ICON model, um, and it shows uh, this first system stalling and still something to watch in Florida. But with that high pressure ridge here, unlikely to be a big storm at that point. The second system, though, a little bit farther to the right could be more of a problem down the road. So again, uh, first system, I think 90% chance is not going to be a problem for the U.S. <clears throat> unless it sits over here and waits for the second system to clear a path across the Gulf. 
Second system, again, still weighs off. It's uh, not even to the Caribbean yet. Could be a bigger problem somewhere here from Louisiana on up to the East Coast at this point. All right, <clears throat> got a frog in my throat, but everyone, thank you for joining me, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a wonderful day, and God bless.